Hello, I'm John, and I'm coming to you from my living room to tell you the hope found in God's word. This is episode one of seven, to the one who conquers. So before we start, I'm going to pray. Dear God, please use this time to send your message out to other people around the world. I pray that this won't just be me speaking, but you speaking through me. God, deliver your hope and show us that we don't have anything to fear. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. So as you know, yesterday was Good Friday, which is the day that we commemorate and remember Jesus' death on the cross. And tomorrow is Easter, or Resurrection Sunday, which is when we commemorate and celebrate his resurrection from the dead. We celebrate him being glorified for all to see and defeating death. However, I want you to take a moment and put yourself into the mind of one of the disciples today. You've been traveling with Jesus for three years. Throughout this time, he has been healing the sick, casting out demons, teaching with unprecedented authority, And you have come to recognize that he is God's promised Messiah. But just as the movement was gaining ground, he is betrayed by one of the very people that you have been traveling with. He is captured by the occupying Romans, beaten and ultimately killed in one of the most painful and humiliating ways known to man. This was yesterday, and now we are here. You don't know at this time that tomorrow is going to be Easter. So what things would you be thinking and feeling? Uncertainty? Fear? Maybe anticipation? If you thought God was still doing something, I think anticipation is something that would be really real to you. Coincidentally, these were the same feelings that Christians had when John wrote Revelation to the churches. These are also the same feelings that we're dealing with right now today. If you would like to, I recommend you take a moment to pause this video and read Revelation 1 through 3. I moved over here for a moment because I like reading the Bible standing up. It helps me express myself more. So, as much as Revelation is about events in human history and the wild visions that John receives, a major theme in Revelation is hope. There are several surface-level observations that we can make that offer hope in this text. However, I would like to draw your attention to the church in Smyrna in chapter 2, verses 8 through 11. I'm going to read straight out of my Bible. And to the angel of the church in Smyrna, write, The words of the first and the last, who died and came back to life. I know your tribulation and your poverty, but you are rich. And the slander of those who say that they are Jews and are not, but are a synagogue of Satan. Do not fear what you are about to suffer. Behold, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison, that you may be tested. And for ten days you will have tribulation. Be faithful unto death, and you will receive the crown of life. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. The one who conquers will not be hurt in the second death. I want you to pay attention to the situation of the church in Smyrna. They've been in hardships and are poor, and others are slandering them. Despite all of this, John tells them that more suffering is coming, but they do not need to be afraid. They are to be faithful unto death. Much like the people in Sardis, we were all facing hardships before these most recent events, though likely theirs were a bit more severe than many of ours. John tells them that things are just going to get worse, but they don't need to fear. As things are getting worse, I want to encourage you the same way that John did. You don't need to be afraid. Things may get worse before they get better, but we must remain faithful to God no matter what. In times like these, continue in love. Continue to love your neighbor as yourself. Forgive those around you. Love your enemy and pray for those who persecute you. Even love the person who is buying all of the toilet paper and all of the milk and everything else that we all want to get our hands on. Most importantly, love God with your whole being. This is what it means to conquer. Be the one who conquers because the one who conquers will not be hurt by the second death. I titled this devotion to the one who conquers for a reason. There are seven churches, so every day this week I want to encourage you to read one of these letters to the seven churches found in Revelation 2 and 3. And each time ask yourself the following questions. Where is this church succeeding or failing? In what ways? What would it mean for people in this church to conquer? 
What will happen to those who conquer? What can I do to what to conquer in the way that Jesus wanted this church to? If you discover anything interesting during this or have a question, leave it in the comments below. I would love to interact with you, answer some questions, and just have a really good conversation about what we read. So thank you so much, and I'm going to pray us out. Dear God, I thank you for this opportunity to come together, read your word, and uh, talk about it with brothers and sisters in Christ. I pray that as we continue studying your gospel, God, that it will reach those who wouldn't normally be reached by a Sunday morning in church. And God, I also pray that you can reveal your hope to a large number of people through this. It's in your name that I pray. Amen. Thank you guys so much.